Yo, what's up, people? Welcome back to the Blaker Spirit channel. Hope you all had an amazing week. I've certainly had one and went on holiday again. I know I'm having more holidays than I probably should. But anyway, I've been on one. I went to Italy. Roller picks. I know I should all the picks and everything. The weather was beautiful. All that good stuff. Uh, I was literally walking to the train station on the way to the airport. It was absolutely freezing here in the UK. It was like, it was like frosty. And then to go over there, somewhere like that, and it was that warm was pretty 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 strange to me it was a very strange feeling but today whilst i was away we're going to be discussing karate combat 50 the golden age i think 50 is the, or was it 100 no i'm pretty sure it is 50 uh the golden anniversary of karate combat 50th one happened whilst i was away um, so I couldn't watch it live, but I've watched it back today and um, some crazy, crazy fights, some crazy uh, performances, a lot of knockouts as well, which is good to see. Um, yeah, just, just lo loads of great combat sports action. But the ones I want to focus on today, you know, normally on these cards, the men obviously dominate it. Um, it's the, usually the men that are headlining or whatever. But this time, I actually think the women are, well, for me anyway, those are the ones that stood out to me, particularly two, two of the fights on that card. Obviously, there were some on the the IFC uh, bit as well on, on the beginning of the show. And those two were Aline Pereira, obviously, uh, getting that knockout left hook signature, um, Poetan style, sorry, over um, D. Begley. But also Jade Durand over Skinner. Um, I'm going to go into why those two stood out for me and why... Their, both their performances provide golden opportunities for Karate Combat's women divisions. But before I continue guys, we can make sure you smash those like and subscribe buttons. It's been hell of a lot. Supporting the channel the past month has been really good. It's been great to continue that in for the rest of October. So yeah, if you could do that before we continue. But now, let's get into it. So we're going to go into Aline Pereira a little bit later, but Jay Duran for me, she really stole the show for me. Uh, I think President Seems AD's reaction after her knockout said it all. Really, really, uh, you know, just sharp, powerful boxing, really. Her, her, her punches were fantastic. And, um, you know, it's quite often, I guess, sometimes maybe to really see that with the smaller uh, divisions, um, with it being at 115 straw weight, but you can really feel the power, the whip on it, the shots and just everything. Nice high guard, like, like just Skinner had no answer to her power. And, you know, like, you know, she, she four and three in MMA, so it's not like a worst, a worst record. At least she's got more wins and losses, but still like not, you know, doesn't hasn't really had that big, big like moment or win or whatever. But this certainly, certainly was it. And you could tell by President Seems Lady's reaction that he's definitely gonna continue to have her. And um, and he says oh, that that is that that she's gonna be a future champion or how she could be a future champion. Now, obviously, uh, I don't have Twitter anymore or X, whatever it's called. Um, but I did see uh, on Instagram that Sava Navan Namajinevat. If, so sorry if I butchered that. I can never get it. But Saba, anyway, um, Saba, she did a tweet out saying, you know, you have to wait, wait behind the queue because I'm up first. Obviously, the 115 champion um, is Stephanie, Stephanie Oliveira from Brazil. Um, after she beat uh, Christina earlier uh, last year, um, but hasn't hasn't defended the belt since. Um, and obviously, Saba put in a really good performance in the Cancun card um, earlier earlier this year. And that obviously surely made her the number one contender to challenge Stephanie Oliveira. But this was a really sharp performance from Jade Rond against uh, another like former MMA fighter in Skinner. So so yeah, big big up to her. And the next one is of course Aline Pereira. This I mean this couldn't have gone any better for uh, Karate Combat. Aline Pereira in Salt Lake City. Where at Karate Combat 50, where her brother, older brother Alex Pereira, pound for pound, the, arguably the best UFC fighter right now, beat beat up Khalil Trank, Roundtree Jr. last week. Um, just, it, it, it just, it literally just couldn't have worked out. Literally a left hook. Like, oh, are you kidding me? Literally a left hook, just like her brother, signature move. It was crazy. Her brother was in the corner, along with the other guy. I don't know what his name is, but he's always in the corner. Also, he's like uh, with Alex. He like does a lot of the translating and stuff for his post-fight interviews. 
Um, they were there, and you could see when she landed on the left hook, she ran over to them, and you could see how much her big brother really means to her. Um, I mean, that is just such a sick family to have your sister do a, doing that in a karate combat pit, and you've got your brother doing that uh, in, in the UFC octagon. It's just absolutely crazy, and to have the power as well. And, and it was a good fight as well. Deep Begley, I thought, uh, put, up a, put up a decent fight. It wasn't one way traffic, but um, the power for sure. Uh, was a big 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 factor in this fight and um that just that left hook it, it almost reminded me a little bit of when israel adesanya knocked out robert whitaker like all the way back in 2018 2018 i think that was when he's like leaning back and throwing that left hook um because you do even though you leave your chin quite high up in the air you know it's just like it's it's just like all body mechanics i guess like waist back and you just got all that power um you know from the from the hip down um and yeah that obviously obviously she's got that Pereira Poetan power gene in her and uh yeah that was night night for D Begley but again that isn't she is for sure definitely someone else that they're going to be looking to challenge Melinda Fabian who's the women's bantamweight champion um again like Stephanie Oliveira hasn't fought since uh 2023 I was on the Vegas card I think it was when she won when she became the champion so um, you know these these fighters they need to get active uh, with the women's. Obviously, there's not there's not as much depth, so it's a lot lot harder. Um, but hopefully, um, now that as more events continue, that we get like these more but contenders um, pulling pulling away. So, you know, Melinda Fabian versus Aline Pereira, they could easily I could they could so definitely see them doing that soon. Um, maybe give Aline Pereira one more fight, maybe. Um, before putting in, in here and there against Melinda Fabian, but then again, Melinda Fabian hasn't fought in ages, so you know, um, you, you know, she needs to get needs to get 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 back in the pit. Maybe have oh, I, don't, I hate to say warm up fight because I always think that's such a disrespectful term, but you know what I mean. Just so she can knock off the rust or whatever, and then go into a big fight against Aline Pereira because Aline Pereira, the brother Alex Pereira, fighting for a cry combat belt, mate, that is. It could have gone better for them this weekend with all the viral shit and everything that came from that knockout. That would be even better to have the two Pereira siblings um, with combat sport belts around them. It'd be absolutely sick. So um, yeah, those are my those are my two main takeaways from the weekend. Obviously, Alejandro Brugal obviously lost to Omar Morales. Even though I thought, even though despite Omar Morales having far more experience, I thought Brugal, especially in that first round, did did really really good. So um, and he'll for sure be back stronger like he's young as well like uh, I, there's no doubt for me he'll definitely go back to being a contender um at welterweight so um and then yeah uh, Arturo Vergara obviously getting the win as well again um well he didn't finish his opponent still such a very very skillful fighter and he's got that very typical I always think Karataka build short body long legs um yeah, he just looks like ideal, and the way he moves around the pit as well, it looks really at home. I think that's four wins now for him, undefeated. So, yeah, he's definitely heading in towards that top three, top five direction. And um, yeah, just wanted to quickly cap off the the KC50 card, um, prioritizing the two fem two female fighters, because uh, Jay Durand and Aline Pereira, because those to me, I think they stole the show. I think the women stole the show. For karate combat, you could say maybe potentially for um, the first time since uh, Melinda Fabian uh, and Stephanie Oliveira won, won, won the belts, become the first two uh, champion women champions of their respective divisions. So yeah, big big stuff. For karate combat heading in the right direction now. It seems at the women's and the men's division. So yeah, just wanted to quickly talk about that. Hope you guys are good. Hope you have an amazing week, and I'll see you in the next one.